Hey guys, Noel here, and it is Friday night, and after a long and tiring week of teaching, I thought it would be fun for us to do a video game review for the video game section of the YouTube channel. If you go to the international channel section of my channel, you'll know that we have a music video by the one and only Exclamation, also known as the Demon Kogure. Uh, now, you may not know that the Demon Kogure was actually in a Japanese arcade game that went by the name of DJ Boy. So tonight we are going to actually be reviewing DJ Boy for the Sega Mega Drive being played on the Sega 32X. This is the very cool Japanese version of this game, which I got at Robot City, which you can see on the channel. Uh, Sega Mega Drive games have stunning box art. It is really, really cool. And uh, their instruction manuals in Japan, I would say, at least based on my experience, are much better than they were in the United States. When I was growing up in the United States, Sega Mega Drive had... Uh, black and white, uh, really cheaply made instruction manuals. This is full glossy color, very beautiful stuff here. So, without further ado, let's get down to playing DJ Boy on the Sega Mega Drive, going through the 32X. This game is ridiculously hard. We probably will not get past the first level, but we've got some stuff to talk about and break down and critique. So you enjoy the attract mode and let's play. All right, so I'm going to hit the lights, and you can listen to uh, Age of Zero by exclamation. Alright, and uh, that song has definitely made me a happy man. So uh, let's turn our volume up here on our speaker. And here we have it. It is DJ Boy for the Sega Mega Drive. Now, uh, if we go to the options screen here, we can set this game to easy, I guess, but the game is insanely difficult. And, I mean, I, I, I'll show you. There's no continues to this game. But we do have very cool manga artwork in full color. This is exactly the kind of comic book style I love. Uh, big, bold, bright colors, like something out of an American comic book, but actually using Japanese uh, style artwork from uh, the anime and manga aesthetic. So that's, that's what I strive toward in my artwork. So this game definitely resonates with me stylistically. And maybe that's because I love Japanese pop culture, but I am American, but I almost psychologically think of myself as uh, being Japanese in some sense, so, while being Italian-American. So that's just me. I love to watch uh, raw Japanese television. And anyway, uh, this game uh, actually came out in arcades, and the Sega Mega Drive version is actually quite a bit different, not hugely different, but from what I've seen, uh, the Sega Mega Drive version, uh, graphically very, very solid, but definitely uh, not as um, much going on in terms of the frames of animation as the arcade. Um, some of the character models for the enemies look a bit different, and uh, the plot of the game is also different. I believe in the arcade version of DJ Boy, he has his boombox stolen, and in the console version, his girlfriend has been kidnapped by a uh, villainous gang uh, whose uh, main muscle is a uh, sassy black woman wearing um, bloomers who farts a lot. This is a thing. Uh, one fun thing about this game <laughs> is uh, you really get to see over-the-top American stereotypes as imagined uh, by uh, the Japanese. And the thing I like about that is there she is. I think that's Big Mama is what she goes by. And I am in not good shape here. Um, I really like um, American mass culture. But I like American mass culture. And it's, you know, almost as someone who, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't necessarily have a lot of money. 
um, and did not get to necessarily live a uh, ideal life all the time. So when I looked at things like sitcoms and music videos and infomercials and commercials, I always looked at that with some kind of aspiration and really appreciated the beauty of them. And so in that sense, I really enjoy watching people who seem to like American aesthetics from other cultures who really uh, can appreciate things that work about American mass culture that people from the inside in the United States tend not to appreciate. And I think this game is one of those things where you get to really see over-the-top portrayals of uh, the United States with big, bold colors, big, big streets, um, you know, roller skating, hamburgers, which we just saw on the floor there, uh, really kind of like 1950s, 1980s sock hop, new wave, over-the-top Americana rock and roll, um, you know, comic book insanity, which is really what this game is. Uh, really nice music. In the American version, uh, the arcade uh, game was narrated by uh, Wolfman Jack. In the Japanese version, the arcade game was narrated by the demon Kogure, also known as Exclamation, who we just saw in Hey 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 Music Champ. Um, but sadly, the uh, Sega Mega Drive version uh, doesn't have a narrator. Um, but uh, Guy Jillionaire, who is nice enough to watch my videos and who is essentially my favorite YouTuber, um, he's got a video about uh, Sega Mega Drive 30th Anniversary books. And uh, one of them does show DJ Boy for the Sega Mega Drive, and it does have a picture of Demon Kogure on it. So there was uh, definitely still a connection with him. All right, and... You know, we only have one health thing here. The not having continues makes this game incredibly difficult. We've already lost. Um, so, the, <clears throat> the fact that we... <laughs> the fact that there's no continues on this game, uh, it doesn't make the game unenjoyable, but it just makes the game insanely difficult. Um, I have beaten the first level, so I know that there is actually a thing where you get to buy power-ups in between levels. And, it, you know, maybe once you get more skilled at this game and you start to acquire some power-ups, it becomes more tolerable in terms of its difficulty. But this is just an example of a, you know, 1990 Sega Genesis game that derives its replay value not only from it being uh, fun to play, which it is, uh, it's just also insanely difficult. Now, this game has a punch button, a kick button, and a jump button for your ABC. And, again, this is, you know, essentially a side-scrolling beat-em-up, but it's got a little bit of a Sonic the Hedgehog style before Sonic the Hedgehog in the sense that you are really smoothly moving forward. And one thing about the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive that I've always noticed is its ability to move sprites quickly on its screen and that really, I mean, as, as great as the Super Famicom Super Nintendo was, and I love that system, uh, I really feel like Genesis games, Mega Drive games, played more smoothly. In terms of the speed in which, the speed and fluidity in which sprites moved on the screen. This girl here is chucking dynamite at us from the streetcar here. Now, if that's not American, I don't know what is. I'm trying to conserve my health here. So when Big Mama comes, you know, she'll give me a break. Literally, that's a Nell Carter reference. Here she comes. Now, there's some people, you know, of the politically correct variety who would consider this uh, racist. Uh, I... I, I don't see there being any malice on this. Japanese culture, you know, there there is no history of, you know, black uh, oppression. So a over-the-top cartoon of a, um, you know, black lady, you know, would they would see in Japan is like, oh, that's, at least in my, my interpretation of it, is like, oh, this is like kind of a, a cute, silly, funny cartoon that has to do with America, and this is a game about American stereotypes in an endearing way, so that's included. 
but I could see someone who's you know very culturally sensitive, you know, thinking that that is uh, not good. And in fact, the American version of this game actually changed the skin tone of Big Mama. Let's actually give this one last shot, and then we'll wrap up the review because uh, I think we've got a good feel for the game, and uh, we've done done some nice talking about it. I mean, I'm just trying to time my punches and kicks properly and throw in some jumping for good measure to try to conserve health and just praying dearly for a hamburger to drop out of the sky. Your back side kick is... Your back and front side kicks are really your bread and butter, in my opinion, of this, in terms of strategy playing this game. This game does have, you know, a bit of a warm-up sense to it. Like, hey, warm up, get a little bit, you know, get your butt kicked a few times, and then kind of get a better feel for the game. Uh, keep in mind, I mean, I haven't played this game a ton. Uh, I did get it at Robot City uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm thoroughly happy with my purchase. So we've got two bars of health, hopefully. Well, she's got this massive amount down here. Just gonna try to jump kick her and dodge her, you know, Taekwondo kicks and farting. And if that's not a winning combination, I don't know what is. That's good, she went down. This is incredibly difficult. I'm trying to hit her without getting hit because I have very little life left here. There we go. Maybe if, when she goes down, maybe if I can stay. Ah! I'm gonna try to say to stay on her, but she gets up and does those rolling fart attacks. This is looking good here. We're tied here in terms of health. That's promising. One more. Oh no! This is brutal. That should do it. No, she's still got health. Darn it. Come on, that should do it. Yeah. We beat her. So now we're going to skate on to the next level here. Raku Show. Clear bonus. 100,000 points. Ooh, our item store. And we have this very cool American girl right here with her blue eyes, blonde hair, hot dogs, and neon lights. So we can, uh, let's buy a hamburger here. Can I buy a hamburger? Yeah, let's buy a hamburger, refill our health. Uh, get some roller skates, get some, looks like we're out of money for this. Can we get another hamburger? Nope, so let's have to exit for now. So we have fresh health and some fresh skates, and now we're going even faster in this level here. So I have no idea what this level has in store. This is really... My second time getting to this level, and my first time I got to it, my health was uh, not in great shape. So these new skates definitely make me go faster. And looks like we've got some obstacles here in a subway. And uh, a bunch of paint, uh, not paint, but it uh, looks like blacktop right there. So I'm assuming we want to dodge that. Jump over those traffic cones and uh, whatnot.
The character models on this are very cute. So I think this is maybe what, uh, maybe I lost, darn it. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is DJ Boy for the Sega Mega Drive. A very good game, a very difficult game. And, uh, it's just going to take a lot of practice to get farther in that game. Until next time, guys, my name is Noel. Wow, I'm in the background. This is like layers of hyper-reality right here. Hi, Noel. Uh, <laughs> until next time, my name is Noel. You take care. And, uh, play some DJ Boy. Bye-bye.